today's topic uh, going to be uh, uh, on diligence. Uh, diligence uh, means upper mother in Pali, uh, which is uh, uh, the D most uh, uh, topic in the Buddhist teachings. Because if we don't have diligence, upper mother, uh, we cannot do anything. We cannot do mindfulness. We cannot do almost anything. So uh, that's why it's very important. And we uh, going to read. Uh, or discuss a sutta called Jantu. Uh, Jantu is the name of a deity at that time, of this time. So I will put the uh, topic this way. Why is diligence, upper mother, important to secular and spiritual life according to the Jantu Sutta, uh, Sangatha Nikai 2.25? So upper mother is the Pali word. And I think uh, you may have heard that uh, before the passing away of the Buddha, he, the last word that he uh, gave to the monks and, and uh, you know, the monastic community was Vaidhamma Sankhara Appamadena Sampadena. So all the formations, sanskaras, are subject to uh, changes so that uh, you all need to be diligent. Because if you, if, if you are not diligent, if you are not into Appamada, you won't do anything uh, you won't do mindfulness you won't do uh, pretty much anything else so that that's why it's very important uh, to talk about this this topic and uh, before going on to this topic uh, I mean especially the sutta I want to uh, uh, you know uh, tell you about the big change that happened uh, to King Ashok you know the Emperor Ashoka. He was a very, uh, uh, very uh, uh, warm-minded uh, king. Uh, you know, and then what happened? Uh, he wanted to, um, you know, uh, invade uh, uh, almost everywhere in India, uh, and 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 become the emperor of the whole India. And then what happened? Uh, he was able to uh, invade and he was able to uh, take over most of the uh, most parts of the India but what happened uh, was uh, he uh, he came to a point where he was very reg uh, regretting and remorseful about what happened to people a lot of people died a lot of people were wounded and then what happened uh, he was very remorseful he was regretting about what he did and then he was uh, the the story says in the history he was he was looking at a he was looking outside of his window and then he saw a very sm very little monk who was seven years old walking very peacefully uh, you know uh, in the area and he asked uh, his uh, uh, royal uh, you know uh, members to uh, you know request him to come to the uh, palace and then he he came in. And then uh, the monk uh, called Nigrodha, he was asked to give a talk about how you how you are this peaceful. And then the, uh, the stanza Paligata, he uh, was to say, was the first stanza of Appamadu Vagri in Dhammapada. Appamadu Amadapada, Pamadu Machuno Pada, Appamatta Nami Yanti, Ye Pamatta Yatamata. So, Appamadu Amatapada, those of them who are diligent, uh, I mean, let's say those of them who are diligent, uh, it is a point, it is a thing that says that they are immortal. They are not, they are not going to die. I mean, physically they die, but uh, spiritually they don't die. And Pamadu Machuno Padang, those of them who are already negligent, who are not diligent, uh, they are a part of this death, though they are living. I mean, they are kind of like, uh, uh, how can I put that name? Uh, I mean, they are they are uh, they are dead, though they are living. And appamatta namiyanti ye pamatta yatamata. Those of them who are diligent, who are uh, really uh, diligent into what they are supposed to do. Uh, they don't die 
although they they die physically but they don't they don't die uh, mentally spiritually from the people like these noble people like the buddha all these noble people though they died uh, far back mm -hmm. but they still uh, live in the universe right still people talk about still people respect still still people explore uh, you know the teachings ye pamatta yatam those of them who are uh, already negligent i mean not diligent they are as if dead so i mean so that's why and and then what happened the king uh, the king who had this bow mentality he got changed that's the point where he thought okay i'm going to i'm going to be um, you know uh, into the buddhist teachings i want to do uh, sangayana like a convocation i want to help the temples i want to help the monks and so that turning point was started because of this teaching on apamana so with that in mind let's go on to the sutta so as i uh, told at the beginning the today's topic is going to be why is diligence uh, within brackets apamada important to secular and spiritual life so i say secular means a normal life mm -hmm. and spiritual is something that we explore in us okay so first of all i think we need to figure out how diligence applies to our secular life i mean that's a good thing in our normal life i know we all need to be punctual right mm -hmm. let's say uh, time management it's a key thing some people don't do things on time right some some people they take other people time so i would say if someone uh, is to promise that uh, that that he or she will show up this time and and uh, trying not to come uh, the time that he she promise it is literally uh, taking others time so kind of other uh, adinada you know uh taking what's not given because because the other person has not given the time uh, and but but this person is taking that person's time uh, going beyond the uh, promise so uh stealing does not just mean that you somebody is going to rob somebody is going to steal but also someone's time someone's precious things uh, that might not be viewed in the same way in the normal world so anyways so uh appa uh, mother like diligence plays a key role in our normal life secular life it is from the aspect of uh punctuality promptness so uh, i think that's a very good thing because nobody in the in the universe has been successful if that person has been uh, late delayed for some other things right so it's a key thing in our life Uh, to become freely into this teaching spiritually okay let's figure out from the sutta uh, okay jantu sutta so i have heard i mean a monk is going to uh, recite the story now at that time several mendicants were staying in the kosala lands in a wilderness hut on the slopes of the himalayas now we need to understand what is kosala kosala was a uh, uh, republic state uh, you know at the time of the buddha it is said that uh, kosala was close to uh, the magadha state you know uh, there were 16 uh, states at the buddha time uh, kosala was one of the biggest and the capital of the kosala was uh, sravasti i mean you know the savatthi uh, where the jetavana temple was located Uh, and ayodhya i mean there were two 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 types of cities a uh, main cities in kosal state and we know uh kosala is a very famous name because uh, uh there was a king called king kosala and we get to know uh his name uh, often times when we read the suttas now what happens there were some monks who were staying in kosala uh, kosalan lands in a wilderness on the slopes of himalaya anyway so we get to understand there were monks who were living nearby there but the problem is they were restless insolent fickle gossipy loose tongue unmindful lacking situational awareness 
and immersion with straying minds and undisciplined faculties. So these monks had 10 issues. Uh, what happened is uh, there was one deity called Jantu. He noticed the 10, uh, you know, uh, uh, 10, uh, uh, how do you call these 10 uh, uh, bad, uh, you know, virtues that these monks have been uh, maintaining that time. And then he wanted to uh, come up to them and then uh, to say, Especially, uh, he wanted to, uh, yeah, he wanted to uh, see the men, the monks, and then to say uh, their issues, ten issues that they been having. So let's figure out what they are in Pali language. Otherwise, people might be uh, really uh, confused <laughs> um, as to what they are. We see, uddata, restless means uddata. Now we know in the five hindrances, uh, there is uh, one hindrance called ud. Uh, Uddacha. So Uddacha means restlessness of the mind. Now, if the mind is not resting, but it is rest, uh, it is trying to function uh, all the time, uh, not not the way it is supposed to be. So we call that mind is not resting. It is restless. Mm -hmm. So when the mind is restless, it can be a problem. Then we are in a we are in a difficult situation to uh, keep it to a certain uh, object that we really want. We can calm it down when it is restless. So these monks, uh, the 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 first bad virtue that they have was they were restless. Number two is insolent. We call it unnala. So unnala means rest. Uh, sorry, insolent, rude, arrogant, and lack of respect. Now, this is a big problem in today's world. Uh, why we become rude? Why we become very uh, arrogant? Why we lose? Uh, why we lack in respect? All these things need to be discussed all the time. Why? Why that the people that we see in society? Uh, maybe sometimes in our families. Maybe in our workplace. Maybe in other places. Why they become rude? Why they become arrogant all of a sudden? Why they don't respect other people? So it could be a problem. It could be a problem regarding their ego at some point. Mm -hmm. At the same time, it could be a problem uh, in their upbringing, in their environment that they, uh, you know, grew up, right? So there could be multiple reasons why they are like that. But anyways, it is a uh, bad virtue. I mean, it's a, it's a, a setback for the spiritual uh, progress. So Uddata means restlessness, uh, Unnala means insolence, which means rude, arrogant, and uh, lack in self, self as well as uh, uh, respect. Chapala, Chapala means fickle. Now, those of them who are fickle, uh, having a hard time, like some, that they are not trying to uh, make uh, mature decisions, they are not trying to be uh, you know, uh, enough in uh, thinking, enough in understanding, enough in executing what is supposed to do, right? So we can't be fickle. Uh, uh, you know, uh, the more we fickle, the, the more we are into big, big problems because, uh, you know, mind is always fickle. Mind is naturally fickle, so we need to take it to a, a point which is not fickle. So it has the experience to make the right, uh, good, appropriate decisions. Chapala. Mukhara, gossipy. This one's mm -hmm. a gossiping. So gossiping is a big problem, right? So mm -hmm. people start to gossip when they don't find uh, there is something that uh, they need to do. Sometimes they want to pick on other people. Uh, they don't know what topics they're going to talk about. So... Uh, but these monks, they were gossipy, and it is a bad virtue as well for anyone. And Vikinda Vacha, loose tongue. Loose tongue means uh, given to uh, unstra unrestrained talk. When we talk, we need to have this restraint, right? So we are we need to calm down. We need to uh, we need to um, 
keep our senses uh, restrained. So that's a very uh, important thing because if we cannot restrain our senses, uh, then it's going to be a problem because then they are not in our, uh, you know, um, they are not in our level so that we can't control them. Sorry, we can't calm them. And then, mutta satino, mut, mut, sorry, mutta satino, unmindful. Now you can see mindfulness or unmindfulness, it is one part of this bad virtue, right? So, mutta satino, that means we need to be uh, I mean, so mindful, but, but they lost that mindful, so they were unmindful. Asampachano, with mindfulness, what goes always is like uh, situational awareness. That means, so when you, when you have mindfulness, you need to bring it with, maintain it with uh, Sampajana, situational awareness. So then let's say you, you have the attention, then you know what to do with that sati, uh, what to do with that mindfulness. So if mindfulness is just a bare attention, then you know what needs to be done with that mindfulness. And asamahita, asamahita means immersion. Immersion means, uh, in Pali we call it uh, asamahita ti appana upachara samadhi rahita. That means we need to have a concentration. Uh, I mean, if we don't have a con concentration, it can become a problem because when we are mindful, when we have awareness, situational awareness, then we know it is easy to uh, for, for us to Concentrate. Vibhanna chitta with strained minds. So that's an interesting thing. So, uh, so strained mind. So mind can go stray at any time, right? Mm. So it, it needs a good management. Otherwise, it will go stray, right? So when we have all these previous things, mind uh, is is guaranteed that it's not going astray. And the last one is Pakatik Pakatindriya, undisciplined faculties. Now uh, we have faculties, right? Uh, we have piece of eyes, we have piece of ears, we have uh, nose, we have tongue, we have body, we have mind. So they are naturally undisciplined. I mean, they are naturally undisciplined in anybody, right? Mm -hmm. But we, but the more we discipline them in the ways how we empower our faculties because the because the thing what happens is they become undisciplined when they uh, get taken over by the objects of uh, the particular object let's say when the form affects uh, the piece of eyes then what happens piece of eyes is taken over by uh, by the uh, object the respect the respect the particular object. So uh, what we need to do is we need to empower, we need to strengthen the faculties all the time. So then it, it won't become undisciplined. So once again, what were the 10 uh, issues that uh, these monks having? Uh, they were uh, restless, uddata, insolent, fickle, gossipy, loose tongue, unmindful, lacking situational awareness uh, and immersion, with strained minds and undisciplined faculties. So they were the uh, main issues that they were. I think these 10 also affect, I mean, common to all of us. Mm -hmm. So I think the, the sutta is trying to say that when someone has no appamada, no diligence, these 10 will come up. These 10 will arise. So we got to be very careful. Then on the Uposatha day, the day that uh, people take precepts, mm -hmm. the god uh, deity Jantu went up to those monks and addressed them in verse. What they said. Sukha jivino pure asum bhikkhu gotama savaka anicca pindamesana anicca sayanasanang loke anicchatang nyatva dukkha santang akansu. The monks used to live happily. These monks used to live happily before they become like this. As disciples of Gautama, 
desireless they sought arms so they were desireless now they did now they are desireless <laughs> desireless they used their lodgings knowing that the world was impermanent they made an end of suffering dukpo sankatwa attana gami gamani karya butwa butwa nipajjanti paragare su muchita but now they have made themselves hard to look after like chiefs in a village they eat and eat and then lie down unconscious in the homes of others that means they are they have got pretty much out of control everything sangas anjalin katwa ide katche wada maha apavidda anathate yata pita tatevacha having raised my joint palms to the sangha i speak here only about certain people they are rejects with no protector just like those who have passed away so then the the god uh, deity jantu particularly uh, brings up uh, this issue i mean i have seen the monks who were before you before uh, seven of you who were really really into dhamma and who were really practicing all these good things they were uh, out of these 10 uh, they were pretty much uh, uh, you know different from these uh, monks they didn't have these 10 issues and they been really practicing really good and who passed away because they they know apamada that's the biggest reminder in the buddhist teachings other all the other things are uh, secondary apamada is the first thing because because of apamada diligence we going to mi- be mindful we going to be this and that mm-hmm. right ye ko pamatta viharanti te me sandhaye bhasitan ye apamatta viharanti namo te sam karo mahanti i am speaking about those who live negligently to those who live diligently i pay homage now this uh, concisely uh, you know me you know this means that appamada is the reminder so i can put uh, this topic i mean this valuable teaching in this way a lot of people they have miscon- misconceptions and confusions about multiple words that they see in the buddhist teachings mindfulness uh and then samavayama right effort awareness called sampajana yonso manasikara wise attention and appamada diligence they are pretty much confused about how they can prioritize these terms so i can say this way appamada is the reminder that's the key thing to all the things in our practice let's say every time you are reminded by appa mother i need to do this i need to do uh this good practice i need to be mindful so after my after appa because when whenever you have appa mother then what happens that tends us to that prompts us to mindfulness awareness and so and so forth so that's what uh, uh uh this uh, valuable teaching uh, you know means to uh, this discussion any questions about uh, this teaching or relevant things no no oh, okay so then let's uh, share all the good karmas with the departed relatives and the deities may all the departed relatives who passed away in the name of all of us uh, be happy uh, uh, and at the same time uh, may they share all, all, uh, the all these good karmas may they be happy and peaceful may they attain the supreme bliss of nibbana sadhu 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 idam me jnati nang ho tu sukita hun tu jnati yo idam me jnati nang ho tu sukita hun tu jnati yo idam me jnati nang ho tu sukita hun tu jnati yo let's share all the good karmas with the deities may they protect all of us may they protect the uh, buddha sasana the order of the buddhas at the same time may they uh, bless all of us everybody uh, in the universe may they be happy and peaceful may they attain the supreme bliss of nibbana sadhu 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 ettavata cha amme hi sambhatam punya sampadam sambhe deva anumodantu sabbe bhuta anumodantu sabbe satta anumodantu sabb sampatti sindhya आकाशाच बुम्मठा दीवा नाग महिंतिका पुण्यंथं अनुमोदित्वा चिरं रक्खं तुलुक शासनं चिरं रक्खं तुदेशनं चिरं रक्खं तुमं परंति
Finally, let's make a great wish. May all the good karmas we've been accumulating so far help all of us to attain the supreme bliss of Nibbana. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. I'm going to bless all of you with a couple of more stanzas. Abhivadana silis nichang vadha pachayinu Chattaru dhamma vadhanti ayuvannu sukhang balang Ayuraru gisampati sagga sampati mevach Atu nibbana sampati iminati saminjatu Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Let's just bow down three times as a respect to the